Encounter is brought to you by the Broome County Council of Churches, where we connect compassion with needs as we inspire growth with dignity. You'll find us in special places throughout the community. For those who remain hungry, we provide meals. For those who are challenged, we build wheelchair ramps. We comfort those who are ill, minister to those who are confined, and we remain an advocate for change and understanding on behalf of every element of our community. Connect and inspire. Encounter the Broome County Council of Churches. Hello, I'm Jeff Kellum. I'll be your host today on Encounter. Uh, as we record this program today, uh, there's been news out of Los Angeles that the airport was uh, disrupted by uh, folks fleeing from what they thought was a uh, gunman. There was some sort of commotion and then people uh, broke out of the airport, ran through emergency exits under the tarmac. And uh, out of fear uh, of terror, they, they fled and looked for safety and refuge. Not entirely unrelated, uh, if you watch the news for a half hour each night, you know there's a certain cycle that there are fires in California and you hear about them for uh, a week to 10 days. Uh, and then the news moves on to another story. And you assume maybe the fires are out, but they're not. And the same thing happens in Louisiana with the flooding. It, you see it on the news and then it's no longer on the news and you may forget about it. But people, as you know, as a victim of flooding, perhaps in our area yourself, that that's a story that continues whether the news covers it or not. In the same way, uh, we have been reading and, and hearing about refugees coming from the Mideast into Eastern Europe and Western Europe and, uh, and coming to the United States. And because it's no longer making headlines or because it's not covered in the news anymore, you may assume that, oh, everything's fine now. But it's not. People are still looking for refuge and safety, fleeing out of fear and terror. And then you kind of, after watching the news, think, well, I really can't do anything about this. But you can. With a few hours later this month, uh, with a few dollars perhaps, uh, and we're gonna find out about a very special event coming up in our community that's sponsored by the Children of Abraham. And here are three of those children here on the set. Let me introduce Eve Berman, who is from Temple Concord. Welcome to the Encounter program. And then a familiar face and voice, Father Jim Dutko of uh, uh, the, the church's name, the long name, uh, is the Orthodox Church of the Holy Archangel Michael, but mostly we call it St. Michael's Church Saint Michael's is fine. in Binghamton. So uh, welcome to you both. Thank Good you. Good to be here. Um, so we have um, a Jewish person, we have an Orthodox uh, priest, we have a Presbyterian who's a Christian of one of those stripes, um, or tartan, <laughs> as we might say. Um, and the children of Abraham would include also the Islamic community of the area too. And right. the, and the community of, the, of, of, of uh, the, the church next to Lord's Hospital. The Unitarian, Unitarian. The Unitarian well, that, Universal. That's, yes, that's yes, that's right. Well. So there's another, another section. Um, and all of these folks come together. Um, and, and how long has the, the Children of Abraham been a group before we talk about the event? Well, it really organized probably around 2007, 2008. I mean, the, the first seeds of it. It was after the shooting at the uh, American Civic Center yes. that all of a sudden it, it took on a whole new dimension. It was our own crisis in the city that opened at least my eyes, and I'm sure eyes of a lot of people, to the awareness that the problems we hear on TV, that we see on TV, we hear on the radio, we read in the newspaper, are not so distant. There are problems right in our own community. Mm -hmm. Of uh, Our communities sometimes are very isolated from each other. We don't know much about each other. We go on simply existing as if there are others, but we don't really know them. And uh, then we had a crisis here in which uh, 13 people were killed by someone who took his own life. And it became apparent as that story unfolded that it involved people from all the communities. Mm -hmm. I know this personally because as one of the clergy first responders to the Council of Churches, we were called to the Catholic Charities Building on Main Street when they were bringing in the news of who had been in the civic center, who, was in, who, who had been in local hospitals, who might have perished, you know, that kind of thing. And so people were all gathering there. Uh, the analogy, the best think of is an airport, and a plane has uh, crashed, yeah. and there are family members there, and they're in crisis. And so these, a lot of people, it must have been several hundred people, came into this building. And in the midst of it, I saw uh, Joe Selipek from the Council of Churches, Rabbi Barbara, a couple of uh, Protestant friends of mine, clergymen, a couple of Catholic priests. I saw the imam from the mosque and, 
and we're in the sea of grief. Mm -hmm. And our guess, the, the opportunity we had was simply to be present and to listen. Right. If we could say something, say something. But I remember encountering a man who was uh, Mideastern, I could tell by his appearance, and probably my age, and, and he was really in, in a tough space, and, and I learned that his wife was killed in the civic center. They came from Baghdad. They were refugees from the war. Yeah. It came to our town, yeah. five blocks from my church. His wife is dead over there, and they're Muslims. Yeah. Uh, I met Dr. Jeffrey King there. His mother was a teacher at the civic center, retired teacher from the beginning of the district, and, and she was teaching that day, and, and she's gone from the Jewish tradition. I, I met another fellow who saw me as, he knows I'm an Orthodox priest, and he comes up to me, and he says in Slavonic, Ocha means father, Slava Jesus Christ, glory to Jesus Christ, and he walked out, and I said, I don't know who he was, yeah. but he's from the sacred Ukrainian Catholic Church, his wife was killed over teaching Eastern European immigrants English, and, and then it dawned on me that, that we have all these people from all these communities in this town, and they're all in the sea of grief, and somehow we're, you know, we're not really not much in contact with each other, and I thought to myself, while the, while the world is in such chaos, we live in America, we have the opportunity to find a way with each other, to come to know each other, to respect, really truly love each other, try to help each other, even though we don't agree on theological, just, I understand that. Mm -hmm. There's so much common ground that, mm -hmm. that it seemed to me that, that maybe, from at least my perspective, that there ought to be a way to, to try to build some of these bridges mm -hmm. in this town of bridges. And, and Eve, um, your own family uh, has... Uh, experience with refugees from, from World War II. Uh, tell the story of your grandparents. Yes, well, um, my mother was born in, uh, in Germany in 1922 um, from a family that was not particularly religious. My grandparent, my grandfather was um, a teacher, a professor in a gymnasium, which is sort of like a community college here, right. and he taught mathematics. When the Nazis came, he was pensioned off, and they sent my mother to America first, and they were trying to get in. They taught themselves English, um, but the United States didn't let them in, even though over time they had jobs, and they ended up getting deported to one concentration camp after another. Finally, they were killed in Auschwitz. Yeah. So to me, while they were in those camps, I have letters from them of how hungry they were and um, how difficult their lives were. So it, it, this doesn't seem like an abstract issue of refugees fleeing for their lives and intolerance and fear mm, on the part the of the people yeah. both in this country and other places that wouldn't take them because they were enemy aliens they were, and people didn't necessarily see the difference. Yeah. You know, so, the other problem is that once they get here, you know, then how does it work out? I mean, my grandparents were immigrants who came to America before World War I from the old Austro-Hungarian Empire, the Carpathian Mountain region. They were Slavs that came to America because they were pretty much economic uh, refugees, so to speak. They were the poorest of the poor. But America offered all kinds of possibilities. I was telling the folks in my parish, we have a, a photograph of people sitting in, in front of the old St. Michael's Church, which was across the street from the present one in 1915. There's about 44 people, they're a choir. And there's little kids, there's teenagers, there's young adults, there's some older people, the priest is maybe my age, whatever. And behind them are two American flags, and they're yeah. dressed to kill, and they're immigrants, they're the poorest of the poor in town. Yeah. So proud to be in this country, so proud to be Americans. This is 1915. In 1917, when the Bolshevik Revolution took place in, in Russia, all of a sudden, if you were a Slav in this, in this community, around 1919, 1920, early 20s, people thought you were a Bolshevik or a communist or something. It had nothing to do with any of that. Right. Mm -hmm. But it was so easy to whitewash, paint people the same brush, and then make life very intolerable for them. Yeah. So people, anybody who's a, an immigrant, a child of immigrant, a grandchild of immigrant, if you know the stories, will find out that everybody who came here first with all kinds of dreams and possibilities so discovered that sometimes those who were here were not so happy you were here at all. Yeah. And so it's always a tough adjustment. So we have to be very careful about how we have an openness that we don't return to people who are new what our fathers, our mothers, our grandparents received from others. We don't want to do that. Ignorance and fear are well, this dangerous is it. it's really uh, combination. A, yeah, sure. yeah. Um, so the, uh, the event that I referred to is uh, one that is now time-tested. That is, ah. in the spring, the event was held and it was such a success that the event 
that we're going to talk about now is coming up again this month on Sunday, September 25th. And this is an opportunity for people to put their hands on uh, in, a, in a helping way. And so let's, which one of you would like to talk yeah, about well, this? I'll say about the first part of the story. So it was April 3rd. It was first Sunday in April. Yeah. It was the spring of the year. <laughs> and we had put this out that you know, we're going to have an, an opportunity for people to come together and, and try to respond in some tangible way to the reality of hunger. Yeah. Sometimes we're not aware of hunger. We, this summer in St. Michael's, we ran a, a, as many sites around town, a summer uh, lunch program for kids from the school districts. And I asked the fellow who works in St. Michael's Hall, he's there 24-7, our maintenance guy. I said, what did you learn this summer, Lyle? He says, what I really learned was that there are kids who really, really are hungry. Like, like you know it in here, but you don't know it here until the, mm. it's like tangible. Yeah. Well, the truth is that there are lots of people who are hungry in here and other places. And this event on April 3rd is an opportunity to come together to try to do something about, in a tangible way, people who are hungry who are refugees. I mean, it's one thing to lose your home, it's lose your village, lose your city, lose people in your family. You become a migrant, you're, you know, and, and you're thinking, well, how am I going to, what's going to happen next week, next year? In, but right now I'm hungry. Yeah. That's the immediate I'm hungry. Need. Yes. And you got to take care of that. Yeah. We can do something. 400 people came to St. Michael's Recreation Center. We were the site for the Children of Abraham's uh, Kids Against Hunger program to provide meals for refugees. And in the end, was it 30,000 meals? Or 30, we were able to pack 30,000 meals. 30,000 meals. Yes. In, within three hours. 400 <laughs> volunteers came. And these right. people who came, some were Christian, some were Jewish, some were Muslims. Some were, no, no religions. Yeah. It didn't matter. They came because they had a common goal that somehow together we're going to do something that makes a difference. Somebody's going to eat this someday and they're going to know, they'll never know who we are, but someone gave a hoot about them, cared about them, yeah. made a difference in their lives. Yeah. So they came together and they packed, uh, where does the food come from? And, and let's start there. Okay. And then let's talk about that cycle of, of St. Michael's Church the volunteers of all different ages, because you oh, talked about the yeah, children. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's, we work with a group called Kids Against Hunger, and what they do is they, prov they send boxes of raw materials that create um, food packets that actually can be stored for some length of time. They actually have a shelf life of up to three years, yeah. so that um, because sometimes in terms of shipping, it can be a little bit complicated. So they, they send um, raw materials to us, and then at St. Michael's, we had five different food packing lines where men, women, and children were measuring their rice, um, soy protein, and, and other flavorings in various quantities. They put them together in plastic bags, and then they seal them. And then after they're sealed, they're put in boxes. And then the children even colored the boxes. They decorated and put perfect, the boxes. Yeah. Beautiful the, the messages. signs of the, what they wrote on those boxes. You know, love from America, love from yeah. New York, uh, yeah. hang in there, I'm with you, you know, I'm reaching out to you. It's like, right. what a gift. Yeah. Drawing butterflies and flowers, it's like, only kids could do this. It comes out of their heart, though. Yeah. What, a, what a blessing to yeah. see all that love. <laughs> and it was only, twi and, and the, one of the other beauties of this is that the meal packages are very inexpensive, so that 25 cents actually provides a meal package. Uh. So for a small, we, we needed, we raised, um, quite a bit of money, but we needed $7,500 to be able to create those 30,000 food packages, and we're hoping to do that again. Yeah. So um, at this point, we have about $3,500, and we're looking to raise another 4,000, which again will, will create a lot of different food packages. If we have extra funds, um, we will use them to defray the cost of shipping. Sure. Now, we talk about the time. shipping. So we live in a wonderful neighborhood. I live on Clinton Street. And Roger's truck is across the street. So when I moved to Binghamton a long time ago, 25 years ago, I was thinking about Mr. Rogers, this wonderful day in the neighborhood, which would be my neighbor. And I go see Ron Rogers and I go sing the song to him. And I go knocking his door. Ron, I said, well, we need some help. We got it. I got thousands of pounds of boxes on great, you know, they need to be shipped. Yeah. They sent guys over, they shipped it down to Delaware. That was their gift. Oh, Covered all wonderful. the expenses. Terrific. These are neighbors, Rogers. God bless them. Yep. So what a yep. blessing for us. So then they go to Delaware, and then um, eventually they're going to go to Greece. Right. They went to Greece. There was a different organization um, 
that was called um, the Orphan Grain Train. And they were the ones that, that stored it and then ultimately were able to send it to Greece. And, um, hope, and we can, now that this has been done, we know that they can do that again. Yeah. If for some reason there are openings for them to send it to um, Jordan or some other place, we would have it go there yeah. as well. So uh, I'm just still impressed with the fact that I could give $25 and that will buy 100 meals. Um, so the event is coming up uh, at St. Michael's Church at 296 Clinton Street in Binghamton on Sunday, September 25th, from one to four. So that's three hours, and uh, folks are working in shifts. Right, and for, we're, so we're asking people to sign up for one 45-minute shift. Um, you'll be expected to stay a, just a little longer so that you can pass what you've learned in that 45 minutes on to, to the, the next, next people yeah. that go on. Um, we have an online um, sign, up. sign up called Sign Up Genius. So if you pick a time on that Sunday you'd like to come, they'll put you in that slot if it's right. available. What happened the last time was that people came and they did a half hour, we were doing half hour shifts. Now we have six lines, it'll be 45 minutes. When they finished the half hour, they didn't want to leave. They didn't want to then leave. Then yeah. new people are there and it's like, <laughs> now you've got a please room. go have a cup of coffee or yes, something. Well, right. something for, but then, you know, right. it was the camaraderie. And it was like to see little kids all grandmothers and grandfathers, people from every religious tradition and no religious tradition, together, happy, doing something that makes a difference. Yes, yes we, a, had, we had people from... What a from, tangible, awesome event. Yeah, yeah, we had, you know, Jewish people, we had black, we had people from the Muslims of America, from the black community in Hancock, we had um, people from the mosque, we had Catholics, we had Greek Orthodox, we had Russian, we had people from every denomination, again and none, yeah. and it was just an incredible experience, and I really think